Hi everyone, my name is Amin, and I would like to share with you some thoughts about what success and failure look like today. Firstly, we live in an era that challenges every day our beliefs around success and failure. Smart devices, artificial intelligence, climate change awareness, all those components disrupt our day-to-day -day definition about success and failure. Let's take climate change awareness as an example. Does it make sense to create or have a company that generates value for, for shareholders, but at the same time, destroy value for all the stakeholders by spoiling our planet's resources? As a matter of fact, success and failure aren't easy to define. Even more, when the success of today can be the reason why you fail tomorrow. Think about Kodak, which was the leader in the 90s and now disappeared from the market. Think about Steve Jobs, who was fired from his own company. Secondly, we are used to contrasting success to failure. Culturally speaking, success and failure are opposed as it was the only way to describe them. It's easy, but that's the case. We are used to pass or fail an exam, pass or fail an interview, pass or fail a workout. Thirdly, some situation can happen in your life where you do not have any clue if it is a success or failure. Four years ago, I was identified as a key contributor within a multinational company. And I was about to get a promotion, a real promotion, as I was supposed to become a country manager. I was already in the job thinking about the people I will lead, the sound of the success bell, the taste of the accomplishment. But unfortunately, I didn't get the job, not because of the fact that I was not ready, or because of the fact that I didn't have the capabilities or the experience, but because of the fact that my department decided three days before my interview not to let me go. My management was not any more supportive. So was it a success? Was it a failure? The situation was very unclear because I didn't have the chance to be interviewed. So at this time, I didn't have any answer. But today, I might have one. So I'm half French, half Tunisian, and I'm used to see reality as gray, a mix of yin and yang. Do you see the point? Mix of yin and yang. And when I was looking for you know, definition about success and failure, I didn't find out this great definition. The traditional success definition is when you get what you want. And the traditional failure definition is when you do not get what you want. So what's the trick? So I decided to get rid of those words as the definition, those definition didn't reflect the way I see reality as gray. When I get rid of those words, I was trying to find out a situation where I didn't have any biases around success and failure definition. I took a time machine to go back into my childhood when I was a baby learning to walk. And indeed, I was in this gray zone at this stage. I was a baby. I didn't have any clue about success and failure definition. My only objective was learning to walk. This is my only focus. So, <coughs> so in this situation, each time I was reaching a specific level of success, I get the great definition. There is neither success nor failure. There is only your level of success. So when I research how babies learn to walk, I discovered very interesting facts. 
Did you know that Davies walks 2,300 steps and falls 17 times an hour? If you multiply by six hours, which is the average daily rate a baby tries to walk, you will find out a daily rate of about 14,000 steps, equivalent to 46 football fields, and 100 falls. I think here it's pretty clear that my promotion was nothing compared with the ambition of a baby to walk by himself. When you try to keep in mind this definition, this gray defined around your success, you build three main components for your success, ambition, resilience, and humility. Let's take humility. Humility because babies move forward and backwards. They try, they work, then they restart, they stop. They are used to taking some poses. They do not know and they demonstrate the humblest behavior, which is humility. Let's take now resilience. Babies are used actually to cutting their practices into small and repeated sessions rather than long session. It means that they build in this specific time the right behavior to change and adjust in order to get what they want. Let's take now ambition. Each day they try, they walk, they manage to get or to take more steps, travel farther distances, and build actually the success for them. So here's the deal. Can you imagine what the baby is having in his mind if not an ambition to walk? So, as soon as you get these things, you understand that your success is not about an end in itself. It's a long journey that never ends. And it's your own choice to decide it, to build how to make it happen. So, each time you reach a specific level of success, you need to ask yourself three questions. The first one is, how can you get over from the past level of success? Most of the time, there is something from the past you didn't get rid of. It can be an awkward taste, a feeling, an image, but still, you need to do this job, because if you do not do it, you will not make you ready for the next level of success that is waiting around the corner. And you need a positive state of mind in order to make it happen. So, the second question is, how do you leverage your assets in order to get the next level of success? Oh yes you will need assets, three kinds of assets. People, hard skills, and soft skills. So let's imagine it's you who wants to become this country manager. Hard skills will be everything around the job, how to make things happen, mastering p &L management, but also mastering everything around sales, marketing, and logistics. If we take soft skills, it will be everything around your emotional intelligence to make things happen. But not only, because when we speak about emotional intelligence, it's about the way you're going to play with all your stakeholders, your business partners, and your employees. And third, 
it's about people. Because not only the guy from whom you learn those skills, but the mentors and everything around that will help you to move forward for the next level of success. The third question is, what is the trade-off you're willing to make? If you take Friedman myth around the free lunch, it doesn't exist, unfortunately. You do have nothing by doing nothing. But you may, some, you may miss something by doing something else. So here's the deal. You have this situation where you can be unsure about where you put your time. So if I, when, I, when I take back Laurel, when I take back um, my previous promotion, I was only focused on the promotion. And I didn't, take into, I didn't take into account everything around. I did allocate, because of this focus, a lot of time to my career, but not so much to my family and friends. As a result, I did cut some links unconsciously with some of them. So the question is, does it make sense? The main currency of your trade-off is your time. And you will need to choose where you allocate this time. Because you cannot be present in two different places at the same time. Now, I would like to conclude this TED talk. We speak about time, we speak about the three questions, we speak about everything around. But the most important piece is this time. As Aristotle said, we live by our emotions, not by our, our sundials, the hours of the sundial. As a result, we should live and take the time to experience all these differences through our heartbeats. Thank you.